This is your all new 2020 Ford Escape third generation. Let's go quirks, perks, and irks. If you think this looks like a Ford McCann, raise your hand. I can't see my hand. Oh, there's my hand raised. Um, not a bad thing, just kind of a weird quirky thing. Up front, your turn signals are integrated into your LEDs, so that's it there. And on this side, your LEDs just run all the way there. Nice touch. Headlights, LED. This is the top trim platinum, by the way. High beams there. LED fog lights. Uh, kind of a waste of space because that doesn't light up and that doesn't light up, but only that does. So I think it was a little on the over-engineered side. Let's take a look at the quarter side on the front. A little more mechanic-like. Let's go over to the side profile of the vehicle. A little more mechanic-like. Uh, like the simplicity of the rims. I know it looks like there's a lot of stuff happening, but compared to some of the other vehicles in this class, I like the way the rims look on this um, uh, on this Escape. Again, top trim titanium, so you get a bit of a bigger wheel. I like the little black uh, design element there. Kind of uh, kind of quirky and makes it look a little nicer. Don't care for that black uh, plastic cladding around the wheels on that side. Let's take a look at the rear side. And if you think the tail lights look like that of the RAV4, you are right. Um, not quite an exact carbon copy, but close enough. You have that L shape there. I don't like the halogen turn signals. I wish they would have given me LEDs, especially for 40 grand. Uh, it's my two cents there. Symmetrical tailpipes on the bottom right there. And let's take a look. Before, actually, before we look on the trunk, here's your backup camera. It's a little big and bulky. I would have rather it be recessed back in a little bit. Let's open up the trunk. One touch button. Up we go. So a bit of an irk here. This is your tray liner, and we're going to get rid of that for a sec. And Ford did this interesting thing where they give you a little more cargo space, but it's kind of a waste to me. So there's no notches on either side, but you pull that up back, you slide it down, you get like half an inch, maybe an inch in total of extra space. Just I would have rather than not waste the time in engineering to do that when all you have to do is just put it up like that. You're really not getting that much more. Donut, a little more spare, uh, not spare, a little spare tire, a little more storage space. Uh, there is the sub for the 10 speaker Bang & Olsen sound system. Get to more of that once we get on the inside of the vehicle. Uh, let's close her up. One touch button right there. Very nice. And that's going to wrap up the outside. 2020 Ford Escape, all new. Ford's website says there's 962 liters of cargo space. And that's the figure I put up in the previous part of the video. It also says you have 974 liters of cargo space as a maximum. And I think what they mean by that is if you drop the part down to below the notch. And then it also says on the Ford website, 869.3 liters of optimized cargo space. I really have no idea what that means. Um, I guess with the seats all the way back, because there's sliding seats in the rear. So I put this one all the way back. That one all the way up front. So here is a perk. The seats slide 60-40 split. You get a lot more legroom there. Here's a perk. Headrests fold down flat. And that makes it easier if this is all the way forward and this one's all the way back as far as getting the seat down there. Uh, perk for now, one lever brings the seat down. They don't go all the way flat. It's kind of on an angle, but you still get lots of cargo space. Here's the Eric. I wish it was up here, but the seat belt holder is up there. I would have rather the seatbelt holder be there. And you could have put your release button over there. Let's take a look up front. Oh, you got your cool door code here like you uh, like they always have uh, have had. So well done Ford. There's my phone. There I am. Uh, here's a bit of a quirk. It's a little nice design pattern and it's actually there's grooves in there. So nicely done. I don't care for the wood trim. Uh, just not necessary for me. There's your standard mirror and window controls. Bang & Olsen logo, 10 speakers, one sub, sounds really nice. Uh, Ford's website did not have the actual wattage, so I'm going to say it's loud. Memory seats. Uh, speaking of seats, the thigh bolsters, not great. They're pretty slim. Um, side bolsters, really nice, though. It's uh, really, really thick. Um, and a nice uh, single white stitch there. It uh, goes into double stitching over there. My irk with the seat, it's not long enough for me. Uh, anyway, uh, this part, the back part's fine. The seat part of the seat or the butt part, whatever you want to call it, um, not long enough for my legs. I'm not a particularly tall or big fellow, but it just doesn't. Yeah, um, there's a there's a better look at just how much space there is between my uh, I guess my calf and the seat. Just I would have liked a little more space. Uh, cool little design graphic. Uh, get that in focus more. There we go. Looks nice. Uh, here's an irk. Uh, the start button is. 
kind of tucked in. How can we get it right there? It's usually uh, flat facing out this way, but you got to do that. And anyway, I'll uh, start it up. You can take a look at the graphic. There you go. Yes, I know that the fuel level is low, and I'll get to that in a sec. Washer fl fluid is also low because, well, the weather's been pretty crappy. Let's start here. 12.3 inch screen, really, really nice. Um, there's a thing called a calming screen, and basically that just wipes out all the information on the middle, lets you focus on the driving, and it's kind of cool, but you still have your um, speedometer and you get your tack and all this other stuff at the bottom as well. It just takes away the middle. So well, well I'll show you what's in the middle. Uh, fuel economy stuff, um, trip one and tire pressures, and uh, again, your calming screen, and you can dig into that for a few more things. But I think it's kind of cool. Not uh, not uh, not too not uh, not it's not words at all. Not too bad. So I want to keep it there for now. It's nice. It's very very bright at night, so easy to see. Well done. Uh, as part of an upgrade option, uh, you get a panoramic sunroof for twenty three hundred dollars, uh, and the opening part is fairly big. Most places cut it off somewhere around like half of that. So thank you Ford for that. You also get a heads up display and I'll show you how, how to operate that right now. That's the sign for it. Come on, get in focus, get in focus. There we go. So you push that and then that comes up on the screen. Focus, there we go. And you just tap okay. And up it comes. I don't know if we can get any, uh, yeah, there's a little zero right there. You can get a few other pieces of information. I don't know, it's, it's really small. I would have rather it project onto the windshield itself. So let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna push the okay button and that tells me heads up display is done. And that's how it closes down. That's it, that's all, not too bad. Here's my one of my biggest irks about the lighting system, about the whole car in general. I always drive with my lights on. Every single car I have, whether it's mine or a press car, I keep the lights on all the time and no matter what. So let's, you know, it's on right now. We'll shut the car off. Pretend we're getting out of the car. Out we go. In we go. It's still set to on. Let's start the car up again. And no matter what setting it's at, whether it's uh, off parking lights or full on, it always defaults to automatic. I don't like that. I wish Ford would let me have the choice as to where I want my lights to be because it's annoying. I just want to keep them on all the time. Just my two cents on that. Uh, dimmer and brightener and your trunk release. Push in for your fog lights and push out to get them off. Overall, the dashboard, not too bad. Pretty nice. I like that it's 12.3 inches. If you go for something lower than the titanium, I believe it's the SSE than SEL, um, you get a 4.2 inch screen. As I quickly scan my notes, yeah, 4.2 inch screen. And it's not all digital. So if you want this, you got to pay top dollar for it. So there are your heated seats. There are no cooled seat options in the 2020 Ford Escape. Weird. There's also a blank panel switch. Uh, top trim shouldn't have those. Heated steering wheel on or off. Nice and easy. There's a bit of storage. Uh, here's an ERC. There are only two USB cables. USB-C in there. And then you got to open up the um, uh, center console. And there is one there. Like it's, it's 2020 and people live off their smartphones. There should be at least two, I think. Um, two up here, two in there in the center console. Eight inch screen, uh, forward sync is sync three. Overall, pretty good. At times it's been a little on the slower side. So let's just kind of run through some stuff. So settings, and you can see how long that lag was between the time I hit uh, settings and I went to something else. Let's go settings again and driver assistance. I guess it's a little quicker now, so not too bad. Uh, let's go vehicle. And there's another longer than usual lag, so uh, a bit of a, a bit of an irk on that side. Anyway, it's not uh, not the worst thing. You'll still get there, just a little slower than yeah than usual. Uh, eight inch screen navigation comes with this uh, specifically uh, top trim titanium rotary gear shift. And here's an interesting fact: I'm in drive right now. Right here's one hand, the other hand's holding the camera. I'm gonna run over here and I'm gonna open the door. Right. Hand didn't do anything. You could, you, it, yeah, you would have seen it. Automatically goes into park if you open the door while you're in drive. So normal, eco, sport, slippery, deep snow and sand, and back to normal. And you get your auto start stop, which automatically defaults to on all the time. That's a bit of an irk for me. I don't like that. 
uh, anyway, my two cents, uh, automatic parking and your parking alerts are there. A couple of cup holders and more wood trim, which is what I don't like. You get a fairly big glove box. Uh, thank you Ford for that. Uh, no CD player in this 2020 model. Um, vehicle, where is it? Ambient light. You'd think that you'd get more than one color, but it's just Ford's ice blue. I don't think you can see it here. Uh, the lights, I'll put the lights on. There we go. Also got the dirt in there. Let's get this one. So that's it. One color. You can control the intensity. Let's do the drive 2020 Ford Escape. So two engines, 2.0 liter, four cylinder EcoBoost, 250 horse, 280 pound feet of torque. 1.5 liter three cylinder EcoBoost, 181 horsepower, 190 pound feet of torque. Everything runs through an eight speed automatic transmission. All the vehicles in the Ford Escape line for 2020 come with either front wheel drive or for a little bit more money, you're running with all wheel drive. So there's really eight trims as far as gasoline goes. There's a couple of hybrid options that we'll talk about in a future review, probably spring of 2020. Steering feel pretty good. Uh, heated steering wheel on this trim. Again, this is the top trim titanium. And, you know, if if you're wondering why Ford took so long, I can tell you that they just wanted to make sure they got it right. And uh, there's the RAV4, and there's the CX-5, and there's this, and there's that, and there's the other thing. There's all sorts of stuff. So it's good that they took their time, and I think they got it right. The styling, I like the styling. I don't care that it looks like McCann from the front. I don't care that it looks like a RAV4 from the rear. I think they've done a great job. It looks a lot better than the outgoing model. Uh, fit and finish on the inside, relatively good. Um, and you know, it's it's a, it's a 2020 offering, so it, it has to be good to stay relevant. And aside from uh, the F-150, uh, this is Ford's best-selling option. And now that they have done away with um, anything without a hatchback, this kind of has to be done right. And I think they've done a terrific job of it with it. Ford's Co-Pilot 360, uh, comes with everything, and that includes, as I stop the vehicle, there we go, uh, blind spot monitoring, uh, automatic emergency braking, automatic high beams, lane keep assist. If you go for the uh, the upgraded version, you also get uh, automatic cruise control. Oh, where's the camera? There it is, sorry. You get automatic cruise control, uh, you get lane centering, and you get the evasive steering. And lane centering is good because it doesn't treat you as harshly as the BMW one where it kind of just jerks you back in. With this, it's just a nice gentle nudge to make sure you're centered within your lane. I didn't use the heads-up display very often. I found the screen to be a little too small, and I found it, and it was, it was a little weird looking at it on an actual piece of plastic as opposed to having it project onto the windshield. Uh, weird note, I just got the car washed. You could see it the first part of the review, and now there's all sorts of muck and crap on it because the roads are wet and gross. Well, it's... It's winter in Canada, and that's, uh, that's just how it goes. I like the rotary dial. It frees up a lot of space. Put some B-roll cutaway now. And the cup holders, just everything's nice and flat, and, and there's a lot more room up front, plus a little bit of storage underneath your HVAC controls. As far as fuel economy goes, 10.4 city, 7.5 highway, 9.1 combined. I've done 470 kilometers of mostly city. I'd say 70% city driving. 30% uh, highway. I'm at an even 11.0 liters per 100 kilometers. The gas tank holds, and here's where it gets a little weird. The 2.0 liter engine holds 59.8 liters. The 1.5 liter engine holds 55.6 liters. So a disparity of almost four. So I, I don't know. I, I thought they would have just had one standard gas tank across the board, but I guess that's why I don't make cars. Um, part of the $2,300 option. I think I mentioned it, but if I didn't, here it is again. You get the heads-up display and the big panoramic sunroof. I will do a cutaway to that now. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up as far as all the specs go of the 2020 Ford Escape. Uh, Pricing-wise, you go from $28,500 for the S, and you run up all the way to a touch over $40,000 for the Titanium. I think it's a pretty good sell as far as what the vehicle is. Um, the biggest obstacle force, force Ford is going to face um, is, you know, there's been a brand new RAV4 introduced. CX-5 is um, one of the best in its class. Uh, Honda continues to make great vehicles uh, with their CRV, And it's just, 
nothing against Ford. Ford's done a great job in what they've presented for 2020. Um, but the competition is so aggressive in this specific class of video. Also, this class of car. <laughs> There's very little road noise that bleeds into the cabin. And I think Ford's done a very good job on that side. Uh, cornering, handling, turning. Um, it's great for the class of vehicle it's in. Uh, I don't notice a lot of oversteer or a lot of understeer. Right, that's going to wrap the review up. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to look at the camera in a sec. Hang tight while I stop the car. Oh, I'm very dark. Oh, I'm very bright. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be back sooner than later with my next car review. And I didn't muck up the ending this time.